Okay, so um, our group's presentation for Intro to Global Climate Change is on the Western United States wildfires and uh, how they're connected to climate change. Um, it's by myself, Philip, Ben Crane, Ben Anastos, and Britton. So we're gonna go into our first slide. So uh, just to start our presentation, we wanted to provide some context um, and a little bit on the immediate impacts on our lives. Um, so obviously wildfires per, uh, produce smoke, um, which the CDC lists a lot of the effects it has, which could be like coughing, uh, just trouble breathing in general, um, and other things like a fast heart rate. Um, the other thing, uh, this figure on the bottom left shows kind of how that smoke is distributed. So um, an issue that maybe like starts out in California with some large wildfires um, gets distributed across the United States, United States with like wind patterns um, and other things. And so I'm from Boise, Idaho, which is this image from the bottom right. You can kind of see the bottom left corner of Idaho has a red section and that's where um, that smoke would be going through and that'd be a visual representation. And I'm sure a lot of people have experienced this. So an important aspect of forest fires is um, its fire regime. And basically it's fire regime is like the pattern and frequency of wildfires that prevail in an area over long periods of time. And it's like the overall like wildfires, not just individual ones. Um, and basically it's like the behavior of the fires and forest structure and composition are influenced by the fire regime. And there's six components to the fire regime. It's fire frequency, size, intensity, seasonality, type, and severity. And frequency is the fire occurrence rate and regularity of fires, favorite organisms that better take advantage and deal with the effects of the wildfire. Size is the is what determines landscape patchiness and determines the distance seeds will have to travel for regeneration. Intensity is the amount of energy released during a fire and that varies depending on fuel type. Um, continued number four is seasonality. Um, it's how like we determine how ecosystems react to fire like after the fire and an example would be like the time of year affecting fire intensity through differences in surface moisture contents. Um, the fifth one would be type and that refers to like the classification of the type of fire. So whether it's like a crown fire, surface fire, ground fire, and they're all controlled by fire intensity and fuel characteristics. The sixth one would be severity and that's the the measure of like fuel consumption, consumption, the quantitative measure of the effects of the wildfire. And so how does that like relate to climate change? Basically, climate change will have an immediate impact on fire regime as ecosystems will more than likely see increases in area burned intensity and severity during fires. Um, climate change will uh, affect renewal of the ecosystems after the fire because it's, it's rising temperatures and precipitation variation will affect fire behavior. And it is said that due to climate climate change, seasonal severity rating, which is how fire danger is valued, valued will increase 10 to 50 uh, percent in the U.S. by 2060. So how are wildfires directly connected to climate change itself? Um, so like Ben was talking about, there's different types of fuels, um, which could be like surface fuel, um, ladder, and then eventually the crowns of trees. Um, and so um, a lot of the times for wildfires are attributed to like the fuel that's built up. Um, but what we really want to focus on and connect with is um, how climate change does this rather than just like that ground cover buildup. Um, and so a big way we can do this is looking at natural variability. Um, so and a research article that I looked into um, explored just a little bit more about that. So if Ben moves to that next slide, I have two visuals. Um, so the visual on the right talks about the classius uh, clapperone relationship, which we discussed in class and went over. Um, it's with more temperature, more water can be held in the air. Um, but if you have like a humidity value that's um, just not to the maximum point of uh, that um, water vapor curve, you have a deficit. And so that deficit is how hungry the air is for the water. So if you have a really high temperature, um, but not that much humidity, you're gonna have a big water vapor deficit, which can cause 
um, like more, there's less moisture, so more droughts and uh, larger fires that are more intense. Um, and so these images on the left um, show like the mean burn area. So A and B show how much area burned um, from 1984 to 2000, and then 2001 to 2018. And then on these bottom parts, they show um, just that water vapor deficit and um, how it's growing. And I think C shows specifically the average days with the high VPD and uh, D shows the same, but just averaged days. And so those are two examples of just how that water vapor deficit can cause more droughts and cause more fires. And that's directly connected to climate change itself. Um, and then we can move on to the next part. So I was gonna talk a little bit about the increasing impacts of wildfires due to climate change. Um, and so since 1986, uh, the longer warmer summers that we've had due to uh, the increase in uh, temperature have resulted in a fourfold increase in the number of wildfires total and a sixfold increase in the area burned by these wildfires compared to the period uh, between 1970 and 1986. Um, and so the, uh, the active wildfire period has increased by 78 days, about per year. Um, and the average burn duration of, of a singular large fire has increased from seven and a half days to about 37 days. Um, and then one other very important thing about the fire season is that snow is now melting between one and four weeks earlier on average per year. Um, and so er an earlier snow melt leads to an increase in moisture deficit. But what um, but what it also does is now that snow is melting earlier uh, everywhere, it's melting earlier at higher elevations, which means that not only is there a moisture deficit at like lower elevations, you know, typical places where it burns, but with snow melting earlier at higher elevations, where normally uh, snow, snow melt wouldn't happen until later and therefore uh, preventing these areas from becoming uh, susceptible to fires. Uh, now that it's snowing earlier, fires, uh, or sorry, now that the snow is melting earlier, uh, fires are now more prevalent at higher elevations, and there's also a moisture deficit there as well. Um, declining forest resilience due to wildfires. So uh, forest resilience is defined as the forest ability to regrow after a forest fire. Um, and so the Earth's climate begins, to, um, as the Earth's climate begins to warm, the periods of cool wet climates required for tree regeneration after these wildfires has disappeared and been replaced just by even more fires and even hotter temperatures. Um, and so tree regeneration was significantly reduced following fires that occurred in the 21st century relative to fires that occurred uh, in the late 20th century. Um, and the proportion of sites meeting or exceeding the pre-fire tree densities decreased from 70 to 46%. And the percentage of sites recording no post-fire tree regeneration increased from 19 to 32%. And so what this means is that there's no, like, uh, there's no seedlings that are being uh, placed into the ground and then uh, allowing trees to be reborn anymore um, in, well, now 32% of post-fire uh, sites. And uh, part of this is because that trees are most vulnerable to fire um, and also to a moisture deficit when they are at their youngest. And so now that there's no period of time for them to ever grow back because we just keep experiencing hotter temperatures and more fires. And so that just keeps burning any of the new trees that are trying to regrow. And this, uh, this prevents uh, forest this pre prevents forest resilience. And this is a graph which uh, links a magnitude of fire to moisture um, deficit or water deficit. And so on the left, you can see that both, it shows different types of uh, forests that are burning, but it also shows magnitude of forests that are burning. And you can see that although these graphs don't line up identically, um, because one starts in 1980 and one starts in 1985, you can see that in uh, about the same years that there is an above average moisture deficit, there is a uh, very large spike in forest fires. 
and a lot of the years that are gapped where there is, are no forest fires or they're very low are years that are either about average for moisture deficit or are negative. So something I wanted to talk more about is the connection between climate change and the um, amount and like the frequency and the intensity of these very large fires, which are also known as VLFs. So as we know, climate change is causing increased droughts and dry weather in the Western United States. Um, as we talked about in class, this is caused by things such as the increasing size of the Hadley cell. Um, so increasing P values are starting to happen um, as the Western United States gets drier due to climate change, which is also causing longer time periods of um, this extreme probability. So um, the P value is the expected number of VLFs in a given time period. Um, and so looking at this chart on the right, um, the VLFs um, P values from 1971 to 2000 are given for many different regions of the United States. And then they have the estimated uh, p-values of the VLFs from 2041 to 2070 on the right side. Um, you can see that with all of these numbers, they're all increasing, but some specific ones that uh, really stood out are towards the bottom, uh, Mediterranean California goes up from 1.87 to 3.03, .03, and uh, the Western Sierra Madre goes up from 1.59 to 3.61 and then cold deserts go up from 0 0.96 to 3.61 which is basically just saying that the the given probability for these very large fires to happen in these regions are increasing that much um, and on this uh, slide you can see that um, given the same time periods um, from 1971 to 2000, going from there to the estimated values for 2041 to 2070, you can see the, the very large increase in probability of the p-values, especially in the western part of the United States. Um, so something else I wanted to touch on is um, these recent large wildfires in their historical context. So the size of these large wildfires in 2020 and 2021 are not historically unknown. For example, in the 19th century, especially uh, the years around 1929, we saw very similar amounts and intensities of these large wildfires. Um, and as we talked about, climate change is a large factor as to why we're seeing these more intense wildfires. Um, but the drought that started in 2012 is a driving force behind the frequency and intensity of them, which we also saw a drought um, in the same area in 1929, but now it is um, estimated to be about 10 to 15 percent worse than the than it was around 1929 because of the changing climate. Um, and as well as that, these droughts are becoming more severe with anthropogenic glo uh, global warming. And then in these graphs that I included, you can see on the left is the intensities of the wildfires um, spanning from about 1850 to now, and then on the right is the amount of them. Um, and you can see that spike in around 1929 and then as well as today. And something I wanted to also talk about is the low R squared values, which indicates that there is a low predictability of what specific years will have these stronger wildfires. And this is because even though we know that um, global climate change is causing these um, drier, the drier weather and these uh, droughts, um, the reason that we have seen these super like intense spike, it has to do with a lot more factors um, such as low precipitation from these droughts, um, increase in lightning storms and intense heat. Um, and then I just wanted to touch on the fact that the CO2 does cause like from global warming is causing a positive feedback loop with war, um, which contributes to the stronger fire like following years, which you can see in these graphs, especially on the one on the right. Like for example, the CO2 emitted in 2021 was twice as much from the wildfires the same time period in 2020. So just a brief conclusion of our presentation. Um, we hope that we made it clear that there's a connection between wildfires and climate change. Um, we hope that you can kind of notice that future wildfires are gonna be much more severe and intense. 
Um, and then just generally, what can we do? Uh, we can try and just combat this through sharing information about climate change itself um, and recognizing that uh, it can impact so many facets of our life, including wildfires. So thank you for listening to our presentation. Uh, yeah.